Today we're going to go over min cost network flow problems in PMO. And specifically in this video, we're going to learn about defining arcs for a shortest path problem. So here's our shortest path problem, where the question we have is, can we find the shortest or least expensive route from A to Z? And in here, in this case, we have a llama that's traveling from A to Z. And what we're going to do is formulate a problem today that will show us that the cheapest path from A to Z is from A to D, D to G, G to J, and J to Z. And a shortest path problem, or a min-cost network flow problem, can be formulated as follows. Where we have a set of nodes, where in, in our problem here, the set of our nodes are circled. We have a set of arcs, which are the connections that we have between our nodes. So here we see our available connections in red. We have net demands for each one of our nodes. So in a shortest path problem, we start off with our origin node or our source node has a net demand of negative one, meaning that at the end of the day, we want to lose our one llama that we have at that node. Our net demand at our destination node Z is plus one, meaning at the end of the day, node Z wants one more llama than it has right now. And all our nodes in the center of our network have a net demand of zero, meaning that if a llama enters that node, it also has to leave that node because none of those nodes want to have a llama at the end of the day. And then finally, we, we have the cost to travel on each of these arcs. We can see those costs circled below. And the remainder of our min cost network flow problem is formulated as follows, where we have the decision variable xij, which is the amount of items that we want to send from node i to node j. And the overall objective of our min cost network flow problem is to minimize our total costs. And we're going to minimize our total costs um, while making sure that we meet the net demand of each node. And finally, we want all of our decision variables to be positive. So in this video, we're going to go over setting up the problem in PIOMO, uh, looking at our nodes, arcs, net demands, and costs, and how to put those in our model file and our data file. So starting off with our set of nodes, um, this set is like any other set where we're going to say model.nodes equals set. And in our data file, this would just look like a long list of possible nodes. So we would list off all of our nodes that are in our network. For our arcs, our arcs are actually going to be defined by a pair. And each pair is going to have a starting node and an ending node. So for example, if we wanted to specify the arc from A to B, it would be the pair A comma B. And if we wanted to specify the arc from A to D, we would have a pair A comma D. And similarly for A to C. And then if we were looking at another node, uh, for example, node B, we could specify that there's a path from B to E and from B to F. And similarly, we could specify all the paths in our network by using these pairs. So in PIOMO, that would look like something like this, where we'd say model.arcs equals set. And then in our set function, we would say within equals model.nodes cross model.nodes. So let's take a closer look at that. This portion of this call, model.nodes cross model.nodes, is saying that we are making a set of pairs. And this first model.nodes is saying that the first element of our set has to be from the set model.nodes. And the second element of our pair has to be from the set model.nodes. And this within word tells us that we're not making every single combination of nodes cross nodes, we're actually only going to specify a subset of all the possible combinations. And then we can specify our net demand, which is a parameter 
and we have one of those net demands for each one of our nodes. And our cost parameter, here cost has two subscripts, i, j, but we can actually specify our cost parameter um, not explicitly saying that it has two subscripts. And we do that by saying that we have a cost parameter, so we say model.cost is equal to a param, and this model.arcs in the parentheses of our parameter call says that we have a cost for every one of our arcs. And we know previously that each of our arcs is going to be defined by a pair of nodes. So looking at our data file, if we wanted to specify all of our arcs along with the cost to travel those arcs, it would look something like the following. We, we would say param colon, and the first part of our declaration is the word arcs, meaning the first part that you see here are the arcs in our network. And then the number following the arcs is our cost to travel that arc. So the first line of this says that there exists an arc from A to B, and the cost to travel that arc is $10. And then if we were to scroll down a little bit on our data file, we could see that we could enter the net demand as follows, where we have a net demand for each one of our nodes. Um, and they would be specified something like this, where we'd list all of our nodes and then the net demand associated with each one of those nodes. So in this video, we've looked at uh, specifying the nodes, arcs, net demand, and cost in our model and data file. And in the next video, we'll look at formulating the decision variables, the objective function, and the constraints when we have these new uh, arcs or new sets that have pairs.